Okay. Good morning, and welcome to Morning Devotions with the community of St. Andrews in Glenwood, Maryland. My name is Jan, and I will serve as leader today. If you are new to this service, know that you are welcome to participate fully. We are recording this service so that others can access it at a time convenient for them. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. Let us praise our God who has given us life and hope by raising Jesus from the dead. Let us rejoice then even in our distress. We shall be counted worthy when Christ appears. O oh God, you have claimed us as your own and called us from our darkness into the light of your day. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Blessed are you, God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land. So now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the loving reign of the risen Christ. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Amen. Blessed be God, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> We're reading Acts 9, 36 through 42. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. And when they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydia was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with a request. Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he stood, when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the windows stood beside him. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside and then he knelt down and he prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and the widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Java and many believed in the Lord. What particularly strikes you in this story? Well, the first thing that strikes me is my niece's name is Dorcas. <laughs> oh, really? Oh. Yep. There and, you go. Uh, and a lot of churches have Dorcas societies that are about sewing societies. Oh. Hmm. I never knew that. Yeah, interesting. Part of me is surprised that he put everybody out of the room before he prayed. Yeah. So there wasn't any, you know, corporate anointing and prayer going on, any group prayer power. Shall I read it again? Just Peter after denying Jesus, you know, three times. Yeah. He was able to, wow. Wow. That, yeah. I wonder why it was, sounds like it was just widows standing around. <laughs> that, that may have been custom. Men would have been there with the body as they were preparing it. Okay. Yeah. It's my guess. <laughs> now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydia was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with a request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, 
they took him to the room upstairs. All the wid widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. I wonder what it was like to be one of the widows who came back into the room and saw her alive. Is your question to put us into the moment? <clears throat> um, yes, let's do that. I'm, I'm with the widows and looking at the clothing, I would have, that would have been comforting to me to look at the clothing that she had made. Yeah. Being a knitter, especially, you would think that. I have, I have clothing that I've made that my daughter said, don't you dare get rid of that. Not everybody has clothes that their mother made. So she wanted me to hold on to those things and they're all packed. Oh, I still have the dress I was confirmed in. I have a, a, a wraparound skirt I made years ago. <clears throat> That's great. I'll read it again. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. And when they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lida was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request. Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up. She gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and the widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa and many believed in the Lord. Is there anything in particular from today's reading that you will carry with you today? That there is always hope. Mm. That's good. I like that he reached out and gave her his hand and she got up. Mm. She was yeah. helped up. Yeah. I'm certainly it changed the changed the widows' minds for sure that yep. day. Strikes me that this story is as powerful as the Lazarus story. Yeah. You don't hear much about it. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Actually, maybe more powerful because it's Peter, not Jesus. Yeah. <clears throat> True. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Well, it's a good story. Mm -hmm. We all have the power to share our faith with others that might um, and lend a helping hand yeah yeah wow okay well, let's move on just one i just think doing that we have to be open to the possibility but not force it yeah meeting people where they are yeah Sure. Oh, here. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Right. 
have control of this, don't I? Hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. Where, O oh, death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your sting. Which one? Oh, let's see. Who's volunteer two? That's Mike. Yeah. Which would you like? Creation, song of praise, or a song to the Lamb? <clears throat> let's do song to the Lamb. Splendor and honor and kindly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will, they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with you your blood you have redeemed for God. From every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so, to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, by worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. Glory to God, source of all eternal word and Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second, like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us offer our intercessions, petitions, and thanksgivings. May we live as those who believe in the triumph of the cross. Redeemer of Israel, hear our prayer. May all people receive the good news of Christ's victory. Redeemer of Israel, hear our prayer. May those born to new life in the waters of baptism know the power of Christ's resurrection. Redeemer of Israel, hear our prayer. May those who suffer pain and anguish find healing and peace in the compassion of Christ. Redeemer of Israel, Hear our prayer. May we be united in Christ's undying love with all who have passed through the gates of death. Redeemer of Israel, hear our prayer. Do we have intercessions or thanksgivings to share this morning? Go ahead, Susan, Phyllis, Jerry, Mary, and Mike. For Katie. For Paul. For Terry and Mike. For Thanksgiving that my granddaughter McKenna has had a wonderful time in Sweden and now does not want to come home. <laughs> Shall we move on? Holy Shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice so that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house, where we celebrate with you forever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation and gathering our prayers and praises into one. Let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world and for the wonder of life and for the mystery of love. We thank you for blessing our family and friends and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts and for leading us into accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again, in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your spirit that we may know Christ and make him known and through him at all times and in all places may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Betsy, you're going to disappear. I want to say one thing. Maybe she can't. She's gone.